This is David Pakman right here, host of the David Pakman Show, political discourse that goes on and uh, is very, very entertaining and knowledgeable as well. It's, it's interesting. I love being entertained. You know, the thing is, you don't have to make shit up. <laughs> That's the great thing is you report on shit. And it's hilarious because look at what's going on outside this building. It's just insane. Definitely. Yeah. All right. Are you ready? Well, let me let me get my 15 seconds. Okay. Seconds. 15 seconds. So this is making television or radio, podcast, web show, whatever it is my show is. Unfortunately, it's not a happy story, at least to begin with. I'm going to tell you all the things I did wrong. But hopefully it has a happy ending. I guess it's still uh, to be written. This is NC-17 radio. I saw some of these images. Let's go. So the first mistake I made was hiring myself to be the host, because I had no experience. I didn't have any of the credentials that, for example, Shepard Smith has on Fox News. Um, that was mistake number one. Getting past that, you need a studio to do a radio show or a TV show. CNN, beautiful studio. This was our first studio. Those are two broken turntables right there. And if you know anything about politics, you know you need two broken turntables. It's a banana on the counter, for crying out loud. That's the studio we have. And behind the scenes, it wasn't any better. Instead of reasonably dressed producers wearing, uh, you know, with actual equipment, that's my producer. And look at the poor guy. He's got an old laptop. It's all he had at our first studio. And, and it, it was really a sad story. And as things continued to go, we said, Internet, that's the big thing. News Corporation server room. Look at what we were making our website with, which is why one day, one white supremacist who didn't like me took down our entire website for a week. It wouldn't have happened if we had this. It wouldn't have happened. But there were some positives, too. This was our first affiliate, WXOJ, Northampton, Valley Free Radio. So we could do something. We could do something that commercial radio and TV couldn't do. Normally on commercial radio and TV, you get 39, 40 minutes of actual content. One out of three minutes is a commercial. We started with 55 minutes of content, and we're even now, we still have over 50 minutes of content an hour. It doesn't sound like a big deal. It is very, very different. It's 25% more actual content. And what else do we do differently? Instead of the normal questions the corporate media ask when they see this picture, these are boring questions, right? Nobody cares. This is not even a legitimate conversation to have. Instead, we asked another set of questions. And I think that these questions, you're not going to hear these. Hopefully, you'll still hear them on Huffington Post, even though that now it's AOL. You're not going to hear these on corporate media. So we were able to ask totally different questions that I think add a lot to the discourse. And we had great guests. Some of them are here in the room. And these are just some of them. We have over 200 guests during the run of the show. People ask me, how did we get these guests? Some of them pick their, up their own phones when you call them. I was surprised. We had them in our studio within 24 hours. If you don't call, you're not going to get the interview. I learned that quickly. I also learned crazy people make for interesting, interesting interviews. <laughs> this guy, two weeks ago, told me he performed a lesbian exorcism. I don't know what that is, but he just swore he performed it. Shirley Phelps Roper told me I'm going to hell because I'm Jewish, and this guy was burning Qurans. This is a cliche slide, I know it, because everybody talks about social media. Really, my show wouldn't exist without social media. I'd probably be homeless. I'd, pro I'd actually probably be in jail if it wasn't for social media, to be completely honest with you. And social media got us on the front page of Huffington Post two weeks ago, featured on all these media outlets, local, national. So it was absolutely huge. And the other difference, what we were able to do, because we weren't corporate media, we still aren't corporate media, is instead of cheesy product placement like American Idol, there's Coca-Cola glasses on the desks. I'm in Eclipse Restaurant in Northampton, one of our sponsors. I'm cooking, I'm cutting duck. My producer's getting a makeover at Jackson & Connor in Northampton. Really different ways to engage sponsors. Obvious place for graphs here. And, uh, you know, what can I say? There's nothing to say. And they're a couple months old, too. These are, these are even steeper. And how do we monetize this? We have some sponsors, but we also, instead of Bill O'Reilly, we don't give people culture warrior doormats. We don't give you a no-spin tote bag. We have a membership program, and people just get more show. I figure if you need clothes, you don't subscribe to the David Packman show. You go to, a, to a, a, an actual clothing store. The model can work. My friend Cenk Uger from the Young Turks, same model, started with free plus membership content. He started with a lot more money. He had been a lawyer 20 years when he started. Um, but it can work. He's now the 6 p.m. guy on MSNBC. 
This is our, net, our current map, over 130 affiliates. They get pretty crowded. Woo! This one right here, that's an interesting story right there. In 15 seconds, I can't really tell you much about it. <laughs> and we're still rooted here locally. This is our regional map. You can see we're very densely populated here in this part of the country. So we're able to really personalize sponsorship, something you're not going to get on CNN. Certainly not going to get it on Fox News unless it's Glenn Beck selling gold coins. So what is next? Corporate media is not getting any more interesting, so I think that there's a huge opportunity for shows like mine and the Young Turks and those to continue growing. Thanks.